What's up guys, welcome back to my channel, it's the girl Ashley and I'm back in with another video. If you're new to my channel, don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe. And let's get right into today's video. Okay, so this is going to be the ultimate, the ultimate guide to passing all your exams. So just see it. So basically I got 11 CXC subjects and I will be, I think it's going to be a part 1, part 2 video. So some subjects in this one, some in other one. So it's gonna be a part one, part two kind of thing where the level subjects that I did, I'll be giving you the tips, the pointers, and how you can pass them. Guys, just stay tuned. So, and by the way, this is very um, subject. We're gonna do the general first, and we're gonna get into the subject specific basically. So let's do the general overall pointers to pass in your CXD exams overall. Guys, first and foremost, I always say this: understand your content, right? So just two tips, right? Two pointers: understand your content, like make the time. Even if there's no time, make make the time or. You just you have to understand your content, right? Because to be honest, on the paper two, you don't know. The paper two is a bit more unpredictable than the paper one, because you know that on the paper one you have the repeated fast, the repeated multiple choice questions, but paper two is a little bit more unpredictable, right? And how it goes, I think it's a like, how the marketing goes. Um, is it one minute? Is it fifty percent paper two? 20% SB, 30% multiple paper one. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I think is it I think it's that. It's something like that. Something like that. Right? Anyway, so the general pointers that I'll give you to pass in your CXC exam, CSEC, are keep as well, maybe. But please go over your content because in the paper two it's a little bit more unpredictable. So it's not like the paper one with your past papers, you have to multiple choice paper ones and you go through and you see that they keep on repeating. The paper two is not like that. You might be lucky if you see a repeated question on the paper two, but most of the time, most majority, like 99% of the questions are going to be different, right? You cannot predict the paper two, like how you can predict the paper one, right? So because of that, you have to understand the content to some extent. Like I know it's time, time they don't have what. That's the only way we're gonna pass the paper, the paper two. But for the paper one, as I said before, multiple choice questions. They always repeat over and over and over and over and over again. So for example, when I was doing um, my social studies exam for the multiple choice, I did past papers from um, I think. All the way from 2012 because I did in 2020 you know I did exam in 2020 so I did past papers from all the way back to 2012 from straight up to 2019 and guess what when I went to that social studies exam I think like it was 60 questions I saw about 58 of those questions before and their answers so when I went to that paper one exam and I saw that, I was like, what kind of foolish is this? Like, is this a joke? All of these questions repeat? So the thing when they say repeat questions, they're not going to just repeat the questions from book. The paper one, I know that the questions repeat. For example, even on the maths, my mathematics paper one, like questions, like the first question, like I think it came the year before, you know. But anyway, when CSC I do these things, they're not going to choose it from one year. Then we go take from 2011, from 2013, on for 20, couple from 2015, and mix it together, and that's your new 2022 paper one multiple choice paper. That's all I'm doing. It's a bank of questions, and then just shuffle, 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 fling out some. And the chances are pretty high that they will repeat so those are my general tips for that now let's get into subject specific how 
we can pass those subjects. But first, I want to start with mathematics. So, I did math. I did math twice. Twice. No, so I did mathematics. I did mathematics in grade 10. I got a grade 3. Then I did mathematics in grade 11. I got a grade 2. Now, guys, the trip to mathematics. Right, let me tell you this. That math exam, that paper 2 math exam, don't make much sense to me. Okay? Because, oh, what? I don't even remember how long was the exam but when I went to that exam I was panicking like when the paper is so thick so heavy that paper too so thick so heavy and the time just is like there's a specific time that you're given to do each question and if you don't know it like you do have a little room like a little time you can figure things out it's like a rush thing right rush thing so I think that that is the reason why so much people so much kids so much students fail maths because to be honest i don't think that paper too makes much sense all i can say is when you get that paper you have to start work just start, start zoom through that your matrices your vectors your you book up on them you book up on them so start zoom through them anyway the paper too don't make much sense because i feel like the time that they give they should give you more time because the thing about that math paper too is that most students don't even finish the paper. Like, material full is just not finishing, but I didn't finish that paper. Like, time did up. So, when you go to that exam, work your hands them fast. Because you'd be surprised to see how fast that time run off. Okay? okay? For the paper ones, let's say paper ones do repeat. So, just go crazy in the paper ones for mathematics. That is that mathematics, that mathematics SBA and your paper one. If you know, you don't know nothing else, they are your only hope. As that paper two is a 50 50 chance thing. So I was saying that I don't even realize that there's actually a pattern in the way the questions are set out. Like, for example, you know, those mixed numbers, like when you add mixed numbers question that usually starts off the maths paper, like something similar to that usually starts off the paper. Same thing with the multiple choice. Like there's a specific question like the format is kind of the same. For example, I know on the math exam I have a matrices and vectors. Usually they're around the back. They're usually to the back of the paper. You know that. Right? So there's a format. So just look through your past papers and you'll see them. Also now for what can help you with this maths now. There are teachers on YouTube, on YouTube such as Crowing Springer, like He's a math teacher on YouTube, you can check him out. And also, if you want mathematics past papers, you can go to csecpasspapers.com. Free past papers. You can just go on Google, write it in, and you find the website. They have it for, I think, all CSEC subjects, majority, if not all. They have it there. So just go on csecpasspapers.com and check it out. Math is a subject that needs practice. So you need to practice. You need to practice, 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 practice. Maths is different from the other subjects, so you know that you just have to practice the maths. That's the only way you're gonna get it right. Now, moving on to the sciences, we're moving on to just some general tips for biology, chemistry, physics. Now, on those uh, papers, the paper tools for all of these things, like each, when I did biology, chemistry, and physics, there was a graph on each paper, right? There was a graph on each paper, so don't think you can run away. From the graph business make sure your graph skills up like that for physics you learn a best fit you know to find your scale you need to know how to label your axis and do all of that physics your gradient have your things that lock like that biology um same thing you need to your graphing skills are up like that experimental skills up up like five past papers for the multiple choice pause for biology chemistry i i did see those past papers those multiple choice repeat but not as much as i would like but they did repeat as for physics and i did physics last year yeah. all right probably only one question repeated on that physics paper just one so that physics paper those multiple choice paper one that i did last year only like one question i recognized like everything was just different or new to me or maybe i just didn't do enough um paper one for physics maybe it's that then your scheme make sure you understand your content make sure your graphing skills up like tall tall 
fall talk yeah buck up on them graph there make sure you know how your experimental skills are that make sure them up and for biology chemistry physics they're not playing with that make sure your graph skills fit and also when you're doing your science subjects just make sure that you understand your content because and you know what even if you don't understand memorize it like memorize it because what you have to learn at these stages and everything in the design and everything in biology and everything in chemistry not everything in, especially physics not everything is going to make sense sometimes just learn a definition and call it a day because it just don't make no sense and as much as you think about it it's not going to make any more sense than that right okay biology make sure your drawing skills up you know your graph skills are up your drawing skills because i did draw on my biology paper too I think I draw like a magnification of a leaf or something like that. Make sure your drawing skills up, up like top, top, top. And also, let's also talk about agricultural science. For agricultural science, you need to, okay? You need to understand your content. It's one of those subjects where it's either you know or you don't know. Like agri, I think agri is a pretty, out of all the science subjects, is one of the simpler ones in a sense, right? I did not say easier, but it's more simpler than the other ones. And so like aquaponics, hydroponics, all those things, you need to know them, understand them, go on the farm at the school and just learn, read the books. For example, out of all the science um, subjects that I did, I probably um, enjoyed agricultural science the most out of all of them. Because it was just not as hectic and as blah, 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 blah as, the, as the biology, chemistry, physics or whatever, right? So guys, and on that agri um, paper, my agri grade for last year was a grade one with distinction in agriculture science. I'm telling you, understand your content and do your paper once. And to be honest, you can get that distinction in agri. Just do what you have to do if you want that distinction, okay? Get yeah, the paper two, understand your content, paper one, multiple choice, right? Can't lose with that. And for example, now let's move on to maybe food and nutrition. For new food and nutrition, um, paper one, for the paper one, do your multiple choice pass papers if you have it, right? And for the paper two, understand your content, like understand the nutrients, the minerals, the vitamins, the different methods, the everything in foods, basically. You need to understand it, because to be honest, Food and nutrition is a technical subject, right? So what I think is that when you do your practicals and stuff like that, and your time plans and them stress you out, it actually helps you on the exam, right? It actually does help you on the exam to answer the questions. So you just need to learn your content, learn your content, learn it, because paper two don't play, right? You cannot predict the paper two, and the paper two is the one that I think gives the most marks. So you can't play. It. Just make sure so you do your past papers. Make sure you study. You understand your content. You study. You do your past papers, especially for paper one, because they do repeat. And if they don't repeat, if it does happen, they're going to the exam. And for example, they took a question from 2010, but guess what? It was the 2010 paper one, right? But you never know. So guess what? You have to use your understanding to answer that question now, right? So understanding is key. You can't lose with that. Okay? So guys, that's the end of this part one of this ultimate guide to passing your CSEC exams. Guys, you can go also go and check out my other video, my 2021 60 results. Um, I just put them on the screen or something basically you can go and check it out and you can go and see my grades and show that I kind of know what I'm talking about kind of know what I'm talking about basically guys yeah but for the subjects that I talked about in this video I talked about mathematics I said I got a grade 2 I talked about biology I got a grade 2 I also talked about um, chemistry grade 2 I talked about physics no physics physics just 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 it's one of those subjects where you just memorize so you don't understand anything i got a great in that subject and then for agricultural science i um said that um i got a grade one with distinction in agriculture science so in total i did 11 c subjects seven grade ones seven grade ones 
three grade twos and the one grade three in physics. Anyway, guys, if you're gonna go and check out that CXC video if you want to. Well, we basically just talk the results right here, but if you want to, go and check it out. Anyway, guys, that's the end of this part one of the ultimate guide to passing your CSET exams. Thank you so much for watching. Share this video, like this video, comment down below if you want to see another type of video. Subscribe, subscribe, just subscribe. Thank you.